In 2007, a British audio programmer and electronic musician attempted to make a video documenting generation loss, which is when one tape is copied from another but each incarnation wears the quality down by a certain amount. He used a spare tape recorded by a friend in the early 90s, featuring footage of a nearby intersection, edited his own music into the clip, and then copied it back and forth until the footage had deteriorated enough. However, this clip circulated on 4chan Sector B in mid-2008, with first-hand reports claiming that watching the entire video in one sitting caused a sharp burning sensation in the back of the school. Common side effects included hearing screams deep in the tape grinding music, seeing human shapes and static, and seeing a disturbingly thin young boy in the window to the immediate left of the yellow traffic light who was staring directly at the viewer. While the effects can be avoided by pausing the video and watching or reading anything else for any amount of time, it is unknown what will happen to an individual if the entire video is consumed without stopping, as these effects vary from person to person. Some users have reported long-term effects of seeing the skeletal boy around them in public, or hearing vague whispers and clicking. One user reportedly committed suicide out of desperation by throwing himself from his apartment window. His body discovered to have severe bruising on the back of his school. I'm a 911 operator. I just had the most terrifying call. 911, what is your emergency? Yeah, hi, um. This is going to sound sh kind of strange, but there's a man stumbling around in circles in my front yard. Could you repeat that, sir? He looks sick, or lost, or drunk, or something. I just woke up to get a glass of water and heard snow crunching around underneath my front window, so I peeked out. I'm looking at him now, he's about 10 yards away from my window. Something's not right. What is your address, sir? 1617 Quarry Lane in Pinella Pass. I'm going to send a squad car your way, but that's quite a ways out. Are you alone in your house, sir? Yes, I'm alone. Can you confirm that all of your doors and windows are locked? Stay on the phone with me. I know that my front is definitely locked, but I'll go check my back door again really quick. I appreciate your help, by the way. I know this is kind of strange, but I really hope that... Sir? Sure. Are you still there? He's... He's still in the yard, yard. But he's... What the fuck? He's upside down. Sir? Uh, stay on with me. What? What is happening? He's staring right at me, but he's standing on his hands now. He's perfectly still, staring straight at me. He's doing a handstand and he's smiling at me and not moving. He's... He's doing a handstand, sir? I... I don't know how he... Yeah, he's facing me and standing on his hands. And he's got this huge smile and he's perfectly still. What the fuck? Please get someone out here now. Sir, I need you to remain calm. I've put out the call and an officer is on his way. His teeth are so huge. What the fuck? Please help me. Sir, I want you to try and keep an eye on him. But make sure your back door is locked again. We need to make sure all possible access points are secured. Can you talk me through and confirm that your back door is locked? Okay, I'm walking backwards now and keeping him in my sight. My hand is on the doorknob now. It's locked. I need to check the deadbolt, so I'm going to take my eyes off of him for a split second. Alright sir, help is on the way. Just stay on the phone with me. Everything's going to be alright. Sir? Sir, are you still there? He's... his face. It's up against the glass. Sir, I need you to speak up. What is happening? I looked away for a split second now and his face. It's pressed up against my front window. His teeth are huge and he's still smiling. There's no color in his eyes. Jesus, please help me. Why won't it just fucking move? Sir, I need you to go to the nearest room and lock yourself inside of it. Do you have a basement or a bedroom that you can lock yourself in? He won't stop staring. He's going to hurt me. Sir, I need you to listen to me. Lock yourself somewhere safe until the officer arrives at your house. Can you hear me? I... Yes, yes. 
I'm going to lock myself in the in my room. And you're positive that you're alone in the house, correct? Yes, I'm alone in the house. Wait, wait a moment. He's moving. He's shaking his head. He's telling me no. He can hear us. He's telling me I'm not alone. Sir? Sir, are you still there? I heard a loud noise. Is everything all right? Sir? Jonathan Felix sat back in the chair after affixing the final electrodes to his skull. He currently reclined in one of the most expensive private scientific investments in the world, and today was the fruition of his, and many others, efforts. The aim of the project was to open a human being's mind and allow them to perceive one of the spatial dimensions above the mediocre three. The actual result was still a point of debate, but it was suspected that the individual would be able to study all possible universes that could be created from his actions, and then chose the one that he wished to follow. A man whose every action would be the perfect, as he had already witnessed the results. Felix had jumped at the opportunity because he was young and headstrong. In his early 20s, and brilliant in the field of quantum mechanics, he was relishing the opportunity to apply the usually theoretical aspects of his craft to a physical medium. He gave the final thumbs up to the techs behind the safety glass, and they activated the first stages of the machine. A microphone in the room relayed his words as the process started. If I have seen further than others, it is because I have stood on the shoulders of giants. Imitation was the highest form of flattery, he thought with a grin. The chair reclined back until it became a flat table, and a large rotating dome lowered down to encompass its entire body. Within the dome, there was a complex crystalline structure lining the inside. He focused on the facets of the crystals and noticed that they had started to morph, shifting his ways his mind just could not understand. He started to feel lightheaded and dizzy. His sight was suddenly filled with explosions of light, and his body started to spasm. Reading his health signs in the control room, the engineers instantly halted the operation. A medic ran in and checked the vitals of Felix, and was pleased to find a weak yet consistent heartbeat. Felix opened his eyes a couple of minutes later. He looked up at the doctor and suddenly jerked up as he realized where he was. What happened? I don't feel any different. The doctor smiled and patted him on the shoulder. Any landing you can walk away from, right? The doctor turned to walk away, caught his ankle on a trailing cable, tripped forwards, and cracked his forehead against the corner of the table. His head twisted to a sickening angle. Reset. The doctor turned to walk away, caught his ankle on a trailing cable, tripped forward, and then was grabbed, by, grabbed from behind as Felix threw himself from the chair, stopping him inches from the table corner. Felix collapsed and threw up, his hands shaking. He realized that he had just perceived two universes and had actively chosen the one he wanted. He smiled at the doctor. I did it. I can see them. I can see them all. Felix's smile faded. He now saw two new universes, both the same as far as he was aware. Suddenly a third, a fourth, a fifth blossomed in his mind. He could see all the possibilities that he was capable of. Some he didn't wish to see. His mind began to fracture. Felix grabbed the medic and in an act of a unnatural rage plunged his thumbs into the poor attendant's eyes. Reset. Felix looked despairingly into the eyes of the medic and started to scream, refusing to stop even when bubbles of blood foamed around the corners of his mouth. Reset. Felix grabbed the table leg and forcefully headbutted the corner, only achieving his goals of shattering a skull on the fourth strike. Reset. Felix sat on the floor experiencing all the potential evil that he was physically capable of. His body shook as he was wrecked, sobs of horror. He grabbed the collar of the medic and drew them face to face. Too far. Too far, he screamed. His eyes blurred for a moment, then started to turn yellow and shriveled. At the same moment, his hair changed to the purest white. Felix, in his final moments, became aware of a magnitude of universes bearing down on him, and he would have to live through every single one. His grip slipped, and his mind was lost to the abyss. Reset.
is how we get down. Yeah, enter, enter. The project's on the prairie, scary. We two at the gate with bloody berries. Blood, blood, a rail full of blood. Back to the cemetery, get more blood. Standing on the grave, drinking blood, smoking bones. We seen the crew of crews running by with stolen tombstones. With hell's angels on the chase, they lost the bus of black skull. Want you embrace? They tie you up in chains and they stomp on your face. They go to purgatory and they beat the fucking case. I look around, man.